All right, so welcome to my series of videos on um, applied macroeconomics. And in this video, I'm going to briefly teach on balance of payment. Now, balance of payment is essentially a very important concept when it comes to international trade as well as international finance, because the balance of payment has an aspect of international trade and it has an aspect of international finance. So balance of payment has an aspect of international trade and it has an aspect of international finance. It has an aspect of international finance. Now, what is balance of payment? Now, balance of payment account is a systematic summarized statement of a country's international trade in goods and services. So that is the aspect of international trade, right? Balance of payment is a systematic summarized statement of a country's international trade in goods and services and capital transactions with all, so the capital transactions mostly will deal with international finance, okay? So with all other countries combined over a specified period. So basically, if one country embarks on a transaction with another country, there are only two things that we can summarize the transactions into. The transaction can be done, or we can summarize the transactions into a current account. That is one account that we can summarize the transaction into. And then we can also summarize the transactions into capital and financial accounts. We can also summarize it into capital and financial accounts. Okay, so here, what are the components of current account? Now the current account includes value of all transactions related to purchases and sales of goods and services, all right? It relates to purchases and sale of goods and services, okay? Now, for me, it goes beyond that because you see, if we employ Factor services, okay? Factor services, all right? For instance, if you, if you employ somebody as labor, okay? We may also want to look at how much we pay for that labor. And that will be the services aspect. So here, a simple way to understand it is that apart from goods and services themselves, it also include incomes also paid to factors of production, all right? Because if you pay money to labor, it's like paying money for services, okay? If you receive interest on capital employed, okay, it is a form of interest on services because the people managing your capital, they are providing some form of service, all right? Okay, so let's do the breakdown of this current account. Let's do the breakdown of this current account. Now here, the current account can or it involves the, the accounts, or it involves recording issues related to trading of physical goods, all right, or visible trade or merchandise trade. Okay, so here the visible trade account is therefore the difference between value of physical goods exported and then value of physical goods imported. Okay. Yeah, we are not talking about services yet. It's just physical goods, all right? Now, let me show you something. When it comes to balance of payment, anything that depicts money coming into our country is a plus. Anything that depicts that money is coming into our country is a plus. And anything that depicts that money is leaving our country is a minus. So for all the items in balance of payment account, whether current account, financial account, capital account, anything that depicts that money is leaving the shores of your country, it is a minus. And anything that depicts that money is coming into your country, it is a plus, all right? So here, when we do export, export means money will come into Ghana, so it is a plus to the current account. And when we do import of goods, it's a minus, all right? That is why 
our balance of trade that takes into consideration physical goods and services. Anytime we do export of goods, it's a plus to the balance of trade. And anytime we import physical goods, it is a minus to the balance of trade because money will be going up. Now, apart from balance of trade, we may also have balance of services, okay, or balance of invincible trade. Okay, but the balance of visible trade is about export and import of physical goods. You can also have balance of invisible trade, or what we call balance of service. All right, and this also looks at sale and purchase of services between your country and the rest of the world. All right, so anytime we export services, it is a plus to our invincible balance because you get money as a country. So anytime Ghana sends out doctors, um, Ghana sends out professionals to go and work outside, okay, it is a plus to our invincible balance, or what we call the balance of service. At any time we import doctors here or we import services here, because we will pay them money, and of course the money will go to their country, that will mean that it will be a minus to our invincible balance, right? It will be a minus to our invincible balance. Okay, so we've talked about um, balance of trade, or as in balance of visible trade, and we've talked about balance of invincible trade, or what we call balance of service, okay? So those are the two main components. Another component of the current account is income receipts. Income receipts, okay? So if you have an asset outside, and the asset is paying you income, Let's say you've invested in shares outside. You are, you are being paid dividends. Let's say you bought a physical asset outside. That asset is giving you receipt or is giving you income, okay? That is also a plus to our current account. So the current account, it has four main components. It has the balance of visible trade. It has the balance of services. That is the balance of invincible trade. Then it also has income balance of income, all right? And this income, we are talking about income paid on or income received on assets, all right? So here, if a Ghanaian has asset outside, if that asset is paying the Ghanaian income, it will be a plus to our current account. And if foreigners own asset here in Ghana and that asset is paying the foreigners income, it will be a minus it will be a minus to our current account, okay? Then the final thing in the current account is unilateral current transfers, all right? So this includes grant subscriptions, pension pay, etc. So here, if you have a relative outside and the person sends you money by way of remittances, it is a plus to our current account because it will increase our unilateral transfers. But if you are here in Ghana and you send money to let's say your relative outside, it will be a minus to the current account because it will reduce the unilateral current transfers, okay? So when, for instance, also when your country receives grants, it is a plus. When your country pays grants outside, it's a minus, all right? So any unilateral transfers paid to the outside world is a minus to our current account. And any unilateral transfers received from the outside world is a plus to our current account. So that would be everything in the current account. Now let's go to the capital and financial account. So the capital and financial account is the other aspect of the balance of payment, and it includes the capital account which represent changes in countries' external assets and liabilities over a given time period, all right? And that specifically, it relates to international ownership of financial assets, okay? Now we can divide it into two. We can have changes in external assets held abroad and then changes in external assets, external liabilities held abroad. Now let me make this very simple. If a Ghanaian 
goes to buy assets. Listen carefully, this is not receipt on assets. Like we are just going to buy the asset itself. So if a Ghanaian goes to buy asset outside, money will leave the shores of Ghana. Okay, if a Ghanaian goes to buy asset outside, money will leave the shores of Ghana. So it will be a minus to the capital account or the financial account. So if, the, if a Ghanaian goes to buy asset outside, it will be a minus. But, but if a foreigner comes to buy an asset in Ghana here, it means that the foreigner is bringing his money here. Okay, so then it will be a plus, all right? It will be a plus. So if we increase our asset holding in a foreign country, it will be a minus to the account, okay? If we decrease our asset holding in a foreign country, it will be a plus. For instance, if I'm a Ghanaian and I own asset outside and I sell that asset, it means I'm bringing my money back to Ghana. So it will be a plus, all right? So any increases in asset held outside, it will be a minus, and any decreases in asset held outside will be a plus. The vice versa will hold. That means that any increase in liabilities outside, it will be a plus, and any decrease in liabilities outside it will be a minus, all right? Because if I'm increasing my liability, it means I'm, I'm owing, I'm getting more money from the outside, all right? But if I'm decreasing my liabilities, it means I'm paying the money I owe outside. So it will be a minus, money is leaving Ghana, okay? All right, so that is the capital and financial account. All right, that is the capital and financial account. Okay. Now, remember that don't mix up income paid on assets with sale and purchase of assets. Any incomes paid on assets is in the current account, not the capital and financial account, okay? But then the purchase and sale of asset itself is in the capital and financial account. So let's get this example here. So here, remember that in a test, okay, you will not be giving the account as, it's, as it is showing here. In a test, you will not be giving the account as it is showing here, because if you are preparing a balance for payment account, you'll be giving items. So let's say in a year, merchandise was this. Are you giving items in a statement form? Then you use it to create the account, okay? That is what is tested in a standard test. Now, here, you see this a balance of payment account. So it started with current account. So the current account, this one here, this figure here, is the balance of visible trade. So the 681.9 means that we have an export and we have subtracted imports, right? Of goods and of, of physical goods. So our total export of physical goods minus our total import of physical goods, we will have the balance of merchandise or the balance of trade. That is the positive 681.9. This simply means that we did more export of physical goods than we imported. That's why we are having a positive figure. Then, oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. I, I, I added the two together. Sorry, sorry. So here, Sorry about that. So here, this is just the export and then point two is the import, okay? So if you want to look at the balance on physical trade, it is the export figure of, export of physical goods of 681 minus the import of physical goods of 1164, okay? Minus the import of physical goods of 1164 minus the import of physical goods of 1164. Then again, if you want to look at the balance of services, the S is the export of service minus the import of service here. Okay, then if you want to look at the net income receipt, the income receipt we have received from outside, then the incomes we are paying to the outside, well, that would be the net income receipt. Now let's go to our capital and financial account. So in our capital and financial account, we have the non-market 
capital asset transfers, that's the net. Um, we have increases in Ghanaian as, um, asset held abroad. All right, that, that's why it's negative. We have increased or we bought more assets. That's why we have a negative figure. Okay. And this is the breakdown of the assets, official reserve assets and other assets. That's the breakdown here. Then, if you come here, we have increase in foreign assets held in Ghana. So if foreigners buy more assets in Ghana, it's a plus. That's the figure here. All right, then the breakdown is the official reserve assets and other assets. Okay. Then we have a, a statistical discrepancy of negative 45.8. One, all right. Okay. So I'm going to pick a, like a Ghanaian budget, all right, a budget in Ghana, then we go through to understand the format of balance of payment well. All right, so I'm going to pick a budget of Ghana, then we go through. 